Okay, I pretty much was uh, um, just looking at this. Oh, and I'm so sorry, guys, for leaning out of the camera. I just, I'm not a, I should know better being an, an actor and stuff. I should know better than leaning out of the thing, but I can't see I'm old. But um, I just want to show you something kind of funny. Um, here is the, this is kind of when I know I'm kind of on the right, um, uh on the right track because look the prologue i don't know if you guys can see that the prologue is pretty clean the prologue is pretty clean i think the prologue is pretty clean because there isn't much else you know that i can really clean up because i don't want to put i don't want to give too much information in the prologue now look at <laughs> i don't know if you can see that i got to figure out how to do this thing so you can um you can see what I'm looking at while I'm, but look at it, especially the next page. Um, that's when I realized I was kind of in trouble that I really didn't know what was going on. And of course, I'm the queen of the sticky notes and I got something on there. I don't know what that says. Um, instead of getting easier, visiting St. Mary's Orphanage was becoming more heartbreaking. I don't know what that means. I don't know where I thought I was going to put it. Oh, also um, something kind of, weird in in autumn we know that she that the main character is black because um i say something like um the beautiful slave girl is walking across the you know but as you know walking across where she's walking across um the lawn um but and I set the scene that it's a plantation because she's walking towards the big house and we know she's angry and you know, these kind of things. But um, I still don't, I don't, I'm realizing that we don't know she's black till a long while, well into um, the first, well, it's hard looking on a sheet of paper to tell how far um, um, along in the book something is because, um, you know, it's so, and of course it's going to change so much over the months and years and, and stuff. It really doesn't matter, you know, so you really can't tell, but um, you, you really don't find out she's black until... Now, in the in the, in the second um, draft, she's being I think I told you guys she's being um, harassed by these German soldiers, and they say something like, um, "Well, are you one of those naughty little colored girls who dances around naked, you know, with, with no bra and panties or something like that?" They say so. Then you know, like right away in the story, just as I was going through this, I realized that um, we don't really know. We don't really know. I mean, people will know by the time they read it because they'll read the first book and they'll, they'll pretty much figure out what my formula is and, and they'll, they'll, they'll have, you know, you know, seen the book cover or read little blurbs from it. So people will know, you know. But um, I really don't, you really don't know until she's definitively until she is actually in the um nightclub the empty nightclub waiting for him you know her german officer that she doesn't know is one um to come in and when he comes in she says something like you know yeah well i'll you know i'll save you the trouble you know i don't peel bananas with my feet you know my my i think she says something like her vagina isn't sideways or some stupid stuff like that, which was the, the, the prejudices, you know, the, the things he's probably been fed. And at this point she's thinking, well, at first she thinks he's coming to arrest her. That's the first thing she's thinking because she knows she uh, dabbles in the black market and she knows she's in, you know, in the resistance and, you know, all these kind of things like this. And she's not really, you know, um, a collaborator or anything like that. So he, she doesn't, um, um, so that, that's the first thing that comes to mind is fear, you know, he, you know, uh, uh, this, this fear, then she gets, um, then like her womanness 
takes over and she's hurt and angry that he's lied to her. And then she's hurt and angry. Well, not, not that he lied because he didn't lie. He just didn't tell her who he was. And then she's, um, the, you know, the thought that comes to her is that, um, um, you know, that he, that she's an experiment, some kind of, like, you know, he, she doesn't understand why he, you know, why he, what he wants, put it that way. And that maybe it's some kind of game he's playing and he just wanted to, you know, I, 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 I can't get into her head about that, in, about that. Cause I don't know how I'd feel. I really don't know how I'd feel. I would be, I don't know. I'd be pretty upset. And I've written, um, how she reacts in, in, several different ways and I'll probably rewrite it again. But in one um, rendition, she, she sing at table. She just keeps sitting there. You know, she just sits there, you know, as he comes in and hands his hat off and takes his long leather coat off and gives it to his, you know, bodyguards or whatever the devil they are. And, um, and then he, you know, dismisses them and then he, starts walking towards her and, and then when as he starts walking towards her she gets up and moves away from him backs away from him and he tells her to you know sit down I, i'm i'm not going to hurt you you know and i do i it's something too i have to go back and change because i actually um i need to i need not to describe so much how um hurt he is because um, he's kind of really crushed, and and I and I I don't know why. Because I mean, hey, <laughs> you know, hey, man, you know, you just walked in, you know, and he actually says that, you know. I thought the easiest way I couldn't tell you the easiest way I was I couldn't tell you, and she was constant. She's at him. Why didn't you tell me? And he kind of says, um, "Would you have still written to me? You you couldn't." You know, I, and, and, and also too, what we have to understand is, um, people who aren't really military people may not understand, but in a way I do understand that he could not tell her, you know, who he really was from a, um, national security, uh, point of view, because that would give her military information that would give her military information and you don't, um, even to this day, and I've been out of the service 33 some odd years, there are still operations and things I don't talk about. There, I'm sorry, that's classified, you know, and when I, I catch myself when I'm talking about the airplanes passing and, oh gee, it's a lot of, you know, I, I don't, I catch myself because that's not, you know, you don't, I still have that espionage kind of thing kind of going, you know, you don't discuss certain things. Um, oh, and I want to show you something really funny. Now, this is when, um, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to put this stuff in. Now, can you see what a mess this is? All right. See that little, and it's backwards. See that little star and how I drew those little paragraphy things. This means I have to move this. What happens a lot of times when I'm writing, uh, it just kind of, uh, regurgitates out, <laughs> you know, and I don't, and things will come to me and I'll, I'll write them. And then I'll look at it as I, as I go back and edit and I realize I have to move that. So that's my little symbol for, I have to move that to another spot. And then what I'll do is I'll put the, um, and I think this is, um, I don't know where I moved it to, but I'm trying to figure out where the devil did I, cause I don't see the other little asterisk where I moved it to. So it must be in some pages. I must've actually written something. Um, um, Oh, and it was a funny thing too. Um, I had to, his name has a, uh, well, the name he gave her, you know, when they were in Switzerland, um, has an O with those two little dots over top of it. And I had to figure out on the computer how to do it. I had to look it up. <laughs> I mean, that's just some of the stupid little writing stuff you have to do. Um, I'll read a little bit more of, of, um, of this, um, actually this paragraph I moved. Um, she had to admit um, she'd been a bit disappointed when she when she'd examined the first German she came in contact with. 
They were all rumored to be six foot tall, blonde, exceptionally fit with superhuman intelligence. The sample of the master race she'd had the opportunity to observe were far from special and she found nothing to be impressed about physically, intellectually, or personality wise. So um, that kind of, that kind of, that kind of opens up to um, that she expected these, you know, super blonde, um, um, super, these tall blonde supermen. And uh, what is interesting about that is that um, he actually is, you know, this, 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 um, super Aryan, you know, he, he is tall and blonde and has blue eyes and is fit and intelligent and rich and, you know, and all the things that she kind of, um, I don't want to say admires, but was kind of disappointed. I think that's why I use that word because I think after the initial, um, fear of being occupied that her next thought was like, Hey, you know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe that's the kind of man she's attracted to. I don't know what her um, lover looks like, the one that got transported. And that is kind of important too, because, you know, Mozart was a teeny funny looking little man and he did all right with the ladies. Okay. Um, I don't know a lot about a lot of rappers, but I do happen to know little Wayne is a teeny little funny looking guy. I've seen him and I'm sure he, and I know he does all right with the ladies. Um, um, Let's see, Tyler Durst, I believe is his name. He's a little redheaded guy. Um, he's um, 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 real social dynamics. He teaches guys how to, you know, how to uh, be, a, how to pick women up and stuff like that. He's a teeny little ginger, you know, but um, they kind of have something going for him. Also too, what he looks like is um, important when he gets to the camp because tiny little frail looking, because at first I kind of had him like a kind of like a Mozart kind of character, kind of a little funny looking guy, but just with this kind of sexuality that you, you know, would um, um, be, um, you know, that, that guys don't get it, but all the women do. That's what I'm trying to get to, in all due respect to, you know, Lil Wayne. But um, that the women get it, but men don't get it. I mean, men look at him and go, oh my gosh, that teen little guy he's got all, look at, look at the, look at the 10 he's with, you know, but there's something sometimes women see that, you know, men don't get. And, um, at first I kind of wanted to make him that kind of character, but then I thought, okay, when he gets to the camp, he's going to look weak too weak. He's going to look fragile and frail and weak and maybe not capable of working. Because I think um, I'm still conflicted as to if he tells them he's a musician, because musicians had it easier, and 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 who wouldn't? You know, I mean, if if um, he arrived at camp and realized what was happening, you know, what what was going on, that. Um, why wouldn't he to survive say, look, Hey, look, I'm a musician, but that's why I thought to put him in the, um, special commandos, but to go back to his statue and what he looks like, um, they pulled the strongest looking men to be in, you know, as they got off the train, they pulled the strongest looking men, the big burly looking men, but I don't really see him as some big hunk, you know, a hawk kind of man. I don't see him as that. But, um, so I, I'm going to have to play with that a little bit. I'm going to have to play with it. You don't have to answer all your questions right away. You're not going to, I haven't, um, figured that quite out yet. Um, and it's, uh, kind of a funny thing when, uh, that after that paragraph, there's a paragraph about, um, how that when the occupation actually happens, that, uh, my character is, uh, hung over, you know, she, you know, when, when she, um, when they actually marched in to Paris, they didn't actually march under the Arc de Triomphe. They didn't really, they kind of marched beside it from the pictures I've seen. They probably at some point went through it, but they really didn't, um, The uh, all the um, new, uh, newsreel footage I ever seen, they're kind of beside it, kind of marching beside it. Um, 
and she's and just to show her attitude about the whole thing you know she had stayed up um the night before that they were making their big appearance you know whatever that she um because what the germans would do they'd go in and do whatever they were going to do and then they take everybody back out and then do it again and film it you know go figure but um the propaganda machine but um she's she's standing looking at the um besides being disappointed that the german men don't look like I want to say she's what she's attracted to, what she thinks, you know, they're all, they're all going to be like also too. Um, she's, uh, she's hung over, <laughs> you know, she stayed up all night drinking her best champagne. She was not going to leave it to them. So here's this awful thing, you know, this, this occupation that, that lasts, you know, years, years. Um, and she's, she's drank all her, drank up all, stayed up all night, her and her friends drinking up all the champagne and they were going to drink up all the champagne that was in the club too. But my damn put an end to that, you know, they were going to just, you know, they weren't going to, and actually I got that, um, scene from Casablanca that, um, Bogey's character and, um, um, not Lauren Bacall, um, How can I forget her name? Anyway, the, um, I almost said it, but she, they, it's, it's a scene that they, they're sitting at, they're in, they're in Paris. We'll always have Paris. They're in Paris and they're, um, um, Isabella Rossellini's mother. What is the woman's name? I hate when I do that. It'll come to me as soon as I start looking at the, the DV, uh, at my own video, it'll come to me. But it's a scene of them sitting at the bar and they're drinking this, you know, the champagne so that the the Germans wouldn't get it. And also there's a um, an old, really old movie that there's this um, town, this little French town, I think it might be an Italian town. Anyway, it's a small little town who is renowned for their, my hip is still giving me a little bit of trouble, who is, um, the little town is renowned for their wine. And the Germans have heard about this wine and they, um, what the people do in the little village is they just hide it. You know, they just hide it. They hide it. So they don't get it. Um, pretty much the same thing happened in, um, Paris. They took the, um, something that just cracked me up. I remember being in, in history class, like as a kid and just seeing this newsreel of the, of the Germans walking into the museum and is empty you know you know the people have just taken the paintings and stuff and hidden them away and what they would do they would draw on top of it you know like paint something on top of it they just you know and and um my character has a um has a actually has a monet hanging on her wall and like she uses the thought um the best place to hide a tree is in the forest. So she just has this Monet hanging on her wall, like it's a print, you know, like it's a, a copy, but it's a, a real one, you know, actually hanging on a wall. And they, you know, like I said, they painted over them. They hit them in caves, you know, where it'd be dry and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. And, and they, they hid their treasures away. So she stays up all night drinking her champagne. Um, Let's see what else she stays up all night drinking her champagne and then um oh she carries then okay now she's in the she's walked in the back door of the cabaret she's in the cabaret and she's had um the food um that she's bought back from the farm she's bought back some cheese from the farm because evidently this um um cabaret has a restaurant and you know they it's like a dinner theater kind of and the crepes are um like a famous, you know, of, um, that, uh, everybody's heard about. So, and everybody eats them. And then it's, um, let's see, uh, uh, with the curfew enforced more than likely, more likely than not, none of the Parisians so desperate and deserving of entertainment could attend the club to eat crates, laugh, or sing along with the musical numbers. So what she's thinking at this time is that um she's going to be playing to an empty house okay now i gotta stop and then i'll um um look at this and then i might do one more